Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. This will be a weekly uh, snapshot of Haile on Holdings here. Too much mark progress on the horizon to actually um, uh, to actually share with you. So what I thought best was to actually take a step back, reintroduce the company, go into the company's website here. This is going to be awesome, man. We're going to go through together. If you're new to the highly on opportunity, spend this 60 minutes with me. This could be life changing for you. Um, I'm going to really talk about the psychology of owning the stock, and um, I'm going to walk you through uh, somewhat of my uh, mental deliberation on this opportunity, why I'm so bullish on it. We're going to talk about a little bit, keep your uh, ears open for what I consider to be the hyper truck uh, highway air purifier. Uh, it was a funny, funny part of this video that uh, I thought was really, really uh, interesting and a real nice takeaway. Um, challenging the durability idea uh, as we introduce the Hypertruck ERX to the fleets through the fleet demos. That's going to be really key. And I think it's going to be key from the perspective of uh, cross checking or cross comparing not only highly on to the legacy status quo. Uh, as we look to identify a paradigm shift in the trucking space uh, to the diesel and the durability that has been enjoyed over the last uh, many, many years, as well as cross compared with some of the new products that are out there and available now in what they're seeking uh, in uh, fleet uh, validation for their specific products. Um, we could talk a little bit about their ability to global uh, uh, scale globally very, very important, something that I don't think is talked about very often. Uh, their current relationship now with their one uh, OEM, Peter Built, which is going to help them uh, in hopefully uh, introducing this from a little bit more of a mass scale to uh, the fleets out there. Um, and then what Cummins is going to mean for their certification and helping them uh, achieve that CARB and NHTSA certification. We're going to talk a little bit about the tidbits of driver satisfaction piece, which is another piece that I want to highlight uh, because I don't think it gets talked about very often. And, and I think what this opportunity means when we collectively bundle all of the nuggets together and we look at this uh, opportunity holistically, and, and then you talk about an opportunity that's just shy of $4, which is just now gaining its footing here as it's stabilizing from what has been a fall from grace from its highs at $58, now basing at four, probably creating what I feel like is one of the best opportunities in an industry that is absolutely ripe for the paradigm shift going forward. We're going to get into that and a whole lot more in this video, talking about trying to identify all things highly on in this opportunity, as I feel like this is probably one of the best opportunities that has come in my lifetime. Uh, and is probably the top buy for 2022 uh, here at a stock price that just does not reflect the goings on at the company, guys. So we're going to jump in and we're going to highlight the website together. Please enjoy. Guys, welcome into Hylion.com. This is the company that I profile from week in and week out. And I know there's an astute audience that tunes into my message every week uh, with the updates that are coming through. Um, there are too many updates uh, right now coming through for me to highlight, and I thought it best to take a, a little bit of a pause here as I do feel like over the next coming 12 months is probably going to be um, that range of time where this company is going to um, it's going to flip with its catalyst that uh, they are in uh, my great uh, my last home in Michigan. Um, there they are setting up for the ACT Expo. Um, I, I want to invite anybody who's new to the message here, and, and I want to assume that there's some people here that are new to the Hylion opportunity to kick over to Hylion.com because there are so many nuggets on this website that I think are worth highlighting. They have improved vastly. This is the drop point for information, and um, I was scrutinizing at the end of 2021 with regard to the information that uh, was being turned out. Um, and long since then has been a, 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 a steep increase in my satisfaction uh, with regard to the information that this company puts out. And I just want to showcase that for these guys, uh, for the few thousand people that we do reach 
You can see here the reach is beyond multiple OEMs. There's Freightliner uh, there. Uh, and I just want to bring your attention to electrified powertrain solutions for the global commercial transportation market. And it's these little tidbits of information. There's Werner, uh, one of the Hypertruck uh, Innovation Council members there uh, that's being showcased there with their hybrid EX product. Uh, we just had a sighting this week again. Uh, more sightings are turning up actually um, across the U.S., both, both from the West Coast to the East Coast, down South and up North. Um, and that is only going to become much more prevalent as this opportunity really kind of comes to the, to the forefront. So um, how, how is it that Hylion is looking to, to take this charge into electrification? Really, it, it's, it's a step away from the traditional means of transporting goods. And, and I think a lot of people, man, it, it's amazing to me. I sit back and sometimes it brings me to a laugh when people are talking to me about being a highly on investor and uh, that's, that somehow I'm this and I'm that and I'm this and that. And people seem to know exactly what I'm, what I'm coming to the table with. And um, that can, couldn't be further from the truth. And, and I do just want to share with you guys, I am a bullish share owner in this company. Um, and my conviction grows every single day. It does not wane. It grows. And it grows for a number of different reasons. And, and, and really, it's the business plan that has me the most bullish in looking at a company like a Hylion and how they are looking to collaborate with and integrate with. And those, those two aspects of this company and what they bring to the table is is incredible and they speak to the total cost of ownership goal of being lowered for fleets they can do that and i think with the totality of like let's say the peter built on the right here and or the freightliner that's on the left here these industries have defined their total cost of ownership down to the granular pennies over the last few decades they don't need a new company stepping in and telling them what is going to be good for them. They already know. Okay. So the question becomes, are we at a time here where the status quo needs to change? Are we in that paradigm shift where companies are looking and saying, look, I can either hold on to the past with diesel application because why? Well, it's durable and because we have a granular idea of the total cost of ownership. Yes, we suffer when the prices of diesel are high. I get it. But to transition to something other than the status quo, now we are taking the chance of compromising the durability that we have grown to love. Okay. Now, this is where Hylion needs to step up to the plate. And this is something that I would ask Thomas Healy about is to speak about what he considers to be uh, a comparable in way of being a durable product. In other words, are we expecting to get on the low end of seven years? How many battery change outs are we looking to have over that time period? How does that add to the bottom line TCO for these rigs uh, when compared to uh, the average cost to maintain a diesel rig? And these are the renderings that are going to be had over the next couple of years and especially the next five to ten years is we are going to know exactly not only for Hylion but also these other companies that I just feel like if you're taking a hundred percent of the truck and you're saying we have to introduce a hundred percent of this truck to the rigor of over the road how much more of a degree of introduction to the unknowns could be had and be uncovered uh, by that introduction to the rigors of the class eight space okay and I'm talking specifically about Nikola and, and Tesla specifically in with, with regard to their durability, their range, their capability, uh, their driver satisfaction. We, we don't know any of that. And to be all quite frank about this, we don't know what that's going to be for, for Hylion either. But I say that tongue in cheek because this is the same Peterbilt truck. And what we've had over the last uh, few years, 24 to be exact, and especially over the last six where they've been uh, going through their ride and drive program, I think it's been very apparent to me that customers have been 
satisfied with the uh, product enough to place binding orders with deposits uh, ahead of time with so much conviction to know that they haven't even tested the durability of the units itself, which gives me an indication that that durability will be there when it's put to that rigor. And I think when I compare the 100% of validation, and I mean 100% insofar as the welds on the chassis, Nikola, the, the, the bolts that they use for the tires, the, the, the transfer systems from the, uh, the power and how the power and torque is generated on the vehicle and how long standing that's going to last. The driver satisfaction, the very material that we're talking about. Thomas Healy talks about this introduced into cold and warm uh, weather applications to see what type of demand over the truck is going to be had. Remember, guys, these are tools. Uh, they, these are not built for um, aesthetics. <laughs> I would argue that a little bit in Class 8, more so compared to the Tesla and, and what. But these rigs have to do the job. It's that simple. They have to do the job. They have to do it at a high level. And they have to do it as long as the fleets are demanding upon these pieces of equipment to deliver uh, on this front. Okay. So for you guys that are new to the highly on opportunity, you can come in here and you can find out more about their hybrid system, the hybrid EX product, which is available on the market today. And the long awaited hypertruck ERX here, which is their uh, full electric version of their uh, class eight semi truck, which is absolutely fantastic. You can click on here and you can learn more about that. Okay. You can come in here, eliminating barriers. This is this is key. And I, I think where a lot gets missed with regard to the Nikola opportunity, I, I think Nikola is unfortunately creating barriers. I think they're probably knocking down the same amount of barriers with regard to their technological advances that they're making on the side of, of hydrogen, which is which is great. Um, I was asked on the last Hylion video if I was invested in Nikola. I own 10 long call contracts on Nikola. So it's not as if I want to see them go, go under. I want to see them succeed as well. I just look at the sheer reality of what it is I uh, presume to be capable with the units now, and I just have a hard time believing that they're just going to break into the Class 8 space as a standalone option when compared to the traditional options that are available uh, on the marketplace now, and really just questioning how large of a leap that is for fleets that are looking to step into uh, the potential for hydrogen fuel cell right now uh, and the availability of that said fuel uh, right now with regard to the lacking of infrastructure in place. Um, I, there was some people that challenged me on the last one saying that Nikola has all kinds of servicing stations across the country. Guys, that's just not true. Um, that's just not true. I, I don't. I, I just don't understand where some of this information comes from. I, I look at the, the landscape itself and where there might be a few, that doesn't mean that that's adequate, okay? You're talking about routes in this country that absolutely span the entire country. And to suggest somehow that Nikola can accommodate all foreseeable maintenance issues out there is really a stretch. And I, 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 I give um, the full credit for all of the imagination for all of the Nikola bandwagon uh, uh, cheerleaders out there, but it's just not there, okay? And I want to see them succeed as well. But 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 tell me where and how and how many numbers and how many routes those fueling stations can actually service. Then I'll play ball. I'll, I'll agree with you. But the difference between me and you is I'm rooted in reality, whereas a lot of people want to be uh, in this fairy tale world where they can make up whatever they want and say whatever they want to support their narrative. I just don't play that game, okay? So affordability with the TCO, uh, as well as the uh, scalability, that's kind of the key here. Um, if we're talking about scaling from 10 orders to something uh, in, in way of 100, to 1,000, I, I don't know. We, we're not there yet. 
Um, my bullish bet is that that does come to fruition into the future in that we are able to scale up for the fleets. Uh, and then the impact really to reduce uh, emissions without sacrificing performance and reliability. These are the nuggets that I ask you guys to focus in on. Um, I, in my profession, read regulations for a living. And it's, it's amazing to me how often you have to look at each and every word and deduce what the meaning is. And I think Thomas Healy sometimes in the back of his mind probably suggests, look, we've already said that. We've already addressed that. Okay, I don't need to continually repeat myself. It's on the website. Everything is fully disclosed in what we're looking to do as we move this opportunity forward into full electrification for the fleets. All right. Um, this is uh, Tarek Sultan, the CEO of Agility, who's also a, a Hypertruck ERX member. Um, this is kind of cool here, um, who has been very, very quiet on the line, is getting some scrutiny I picked up just this week uh, with regard to uh, Agility's um, uh, adherence to or, or collaboration with Hylion. I have no reason to suggest that those aren't those relationships are not intact and are going to be uh, coming to fruition somewhere down the line. But uh, kind of cool stuff. Let's let's get in here and we'll talk about their flagship product. This is the Hypertruck ERX. For those of you who don't know, that is the headquarters of Hylion. This is no small potatoes. 650 to $700 million of market cap right now fluctuating from week to week. The stock price is up massively over the last couple of months. Nobody's talking about it except for Mua. Mua. And you still have uh, all kinds of haters out there. Now the hate is such to suggest that, well, it's going to approach $4 and it's going to retract back to $350. Immaterial. It means nothing. Uh, you're going to have to come to the table with something a little bit more scrutinizing with your kindergarten stock market application if you're going to somehow create a narrative again in fairy tale land that is going to suggest something than what this picture suggests here in that they have a very, very real product. They have a very, very powerful product. They have a headquarters to boot. A lot of people were like, well, they rent the building. They just started. Um, and, and I think to have fair expectations, um, I, you know, I was critical of the company, but there has never, ever been a time when owning this company where I haven't said, look, it's a long-term type of play. Okay. And I would have loved to have seen this thing just skyrocket to the moon as of last week or last month or last year. Uh, that didn't happen. Uh, will it happen next month, next year in five years? I don't know. I don't know. That is not why we invest. Um, that is not why um, I look to come on and build a narrative that supports my initiative. Um, my initiative, quite frankly, on my private uh, business here uh, is to support and share the message of Hylion because I, I think this country and the world itself needs the solution. And I think I've been provided uh, to some small degree, yes, some level of acceptance of this product within big industry and the hypertruck ERX council is just kind of kind of the um, uh, kind of the introduction to that end um, whether or not they garner another order from here going forward I I don't know guys I I don't know um, I I try not to be as presumptuous as I can with my open dialogue and when I am looking to kind of forecast or be presumptuous with my dialogue I premise that with that and I let you know hey look this is kind of where I'm thinking this could go. And that is the beauty of the discussion. That's why the Hylion Discord group is so good in that it keeps the dialogue fresh. It keeps it going. And it's ongoing from uh, every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Those guys never sleep, man. It's like, it's like the city that never sleeps here in New York, man. I love it. Those guys are great. Guys and gals, great, great community to find out further information on this opportunity. But uh, pursuing our vision for a net carbon negative commercial transportation is ambitious. It certainly is. A lot of hurdles to overcome, real and achievable through our technology. Okay. And they're basically saying we can do this. That's what that means. 
real and achievable through our technology, a net carbon negative emission solution for electrified commercial fleets when using RNG. RNG is um, coming available here. Hylion is well positioned to benefit from those new initiatives in new fueling stations, as well as uh, some of the proposed legislations that I talked about uh, last week. I shared the entire piece of proposed legislation uh, through my Facebook group as well, so patrons could get in there and look, and they, they could look for themselves and not just, you know, sit back and hear a commentary or an opinion uh, on highly on from my videos. I want to make sure that I'm connecting connecting you as well as I can to the information that I've grown accustomed to uh, at know and love, actually. I know this website inside and out. I know every piece of word, but to, to bring some attention for you guys on some of the highlights may help you guys who are unfamiliar with the opportunity. A renewable natural gas is produced from bio waste. We know that. We talked about that last uh, last week, and there's going to be the one dollar uh, of proposed credit for the producers and the end users of RNG. It's just the way to, that we need to go. It's that, it's that, that simple. Um, I'm not, you know, if I'm wrong in this being the approach into the future, by by God, please tell me, guys. Send me a letter. Uh, write me an email. Leave me a comment. RNG is not the way, Ryan. You suck. Let me know, okay? I'm not a blow smoke up people's asses type of fella, okay? Just let me know. Let me know whether or not over the next 50 years we will fail to realize any type of introduction to uh, the fleets in hydrogen fuel cell, Tesla, all electric BEV vehicles, man. Let me know. I, I think I've went through this before where I sat on the sideline monitoring the solar craze 20 years ago, and it did not end well. It did not end well. It was bad because there is a careful balance that needs to be acknowledged in this, in that the people who would suggest going all green for the sake of going all green at the expense of business, none of that matters. We just need to go all green. There has to be a careful and scalable and calculable acknowledgement to how important this is to, yes, go green, but also to salvage and maintain that, uh, that bottom line benefit to a lot of these companies that are publicly traded companies. There's a lot of private companies that are um, taking on this as an initiative. That's great. As a public com a private company, no problem. You do not have shareholders to answer to. You have a board and, and you're looking to actually save money, which tells me a lot that uh, publicly traded companies are looking to be called upon with the flag of green. Again, using Hylion as their solution because, again, they're not just a go green company, but rather a, a, a scalable technology that can be integrated into the fleets and not lose a bit. As a matter of fact, I would suggest that Hylion actually boasts the ability to improve, dare I say improve upon existing and predictable performance of our diesel fleets out there. They can improve upon the driver experience. They can improve upon the payload. They can improve upon the ability of even the company's uh, reduction of their carbon score in other capacities within their business. And when you talk about a $3.50 stock price or a $4 stock price, you're barking up the wrong tree if you expect me to react to the fluctuations of the stock price now. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing right now. It's great that we've got a little bit of appreciation in the stock price. And lo and behold, we've got people that are talking about, I'm buying the stock here. They're showing their screenshots on Twitter at 396. Great. Good for you. I was buying the stock at $2.65 when everybody was talking about the stock going to a dollar. Okay? Cojonas. Okay? It's all right. I'm sitting on my current position. I'm not accumulating shares right here. I haven't bought the stock since the last time I picked up that last block at $2.65. It was a 10 share block of 10 share, uh, 10 contracts for leaps uh, into 2024. I think those are going to be very, very lucrative contracts. Um, that is me again, presuming. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, but I think those are going to be lucrative. There's going to be people out there that disagree with me. That's fine. You can disagree all you want. It's no problem. Uh, I will, in turn, uh, either realize one of two outcomes. And this is where it gets interesting to me. A lot of people come on and they say, Ryan, you're ugly. You're a troll. 
you're doing this, you're doing that, you're showboating for the company, you're doing this, you're doing this. Wrong. Wrong. Let me let me break it down to you in kindergarten language, okay? I am an investor in the company. The company is either going to go up or it's going to go down. No more fluff, all right? Trim away the fat, okay? You guys that want to create a narrative around this company about this and that and everything under the sun, it really comes down to do you want to be a share owner or not, okay? Get up, shut up, or get out. That's simple, all right? This is investing. It doesn't mean anything with regard to my personal relationships, which some of you guys, man, you can dig deep with your personal attacks. I'm telling you what, some of you guys are really, really devoted to your craft. When all the while, I am a good person. And I don't do YouTube for a living, man. I have a a, a job <laughs> that I go and I serve in. And I think a lot of you guys would feel awful bad with your criticism if you knew exactly what I actually did day to day with my uh, with my with my career uh, in an effort to support my family. So some of you guys, man, I tell you what, um, if you ever had the courage to say some of the things that you say to me to my face. Uh, the closest thing that I do to allow that to happen is the Friday live stream. And I've had a few people come in and say, yeah, I'll debate you on Friday. It is an open freaking invitation. What the hell else do I need to do to interpret that for you morons who are continually looking to beat the drum on this? Okay. Now there is a chance of either one of the two outcomes, either the, uh, the company does not do well or it does do well. Okay. If it does well, I am positioned to do well. If it doesn't do well, I am positioned not to do well. Okay. Those are the two outcomes. Let it go. Uh, I'm fine with my deal. I'm good. All right. I live a great life. I have a great family. I'm financially secure and I have a great career. I'm fine. Why don't you seek out some of those of the aforementioned that I just mentioned on your own? And stop trolling people who you have no idea what they bring to the table. All right? Driver familiarity, I just mentioned that. The infrastructure that's existing, if you're an investor in the company, you're investing on that very front. They don't put it on the website just to be willy-nilly about the information. It's incredible. Reduced cost of ownership. We know it to be reduced over the course of uh, the longevity of the system. That upfront cost is going to be about... $200,000 more to purchase the unit, but the cost savings over time is going to quickly uh, 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 be uh, apparent because the diesel truck, although it is cheaper on the onset, you still have to run the unit with fuel. And fuel just so happens to be almost the cost of the original unit itself over the course of running the unit. So it's a rethink of how we apply TCO, the TCO being uh, realized on the back end of the Hypertruck ERX, whereas the potential for a lower entry-level unit on the diesel side is realized on the onset, full well knowing that you have to incur those costs of diesel going forward. The intelligent electric powertrain, what a cool, cool thing, man. And I see something new every time I come into this website, and I'm just, I'm just amazed every time I come at the uh, amount of work that has gone into this website. So kudos to Thomas Healy and the team here for putting together this product um, in, in sharing the information um, on Hylion. I know uh, Thomas is doing the uh, uh, introductory videos and, and going a little bit more in depth uh, from his perspective. And I think those are great too. Like I said, we're, the, the information that's being forthcoming over the last six months has been fantastic. In 2022, they've done a really, really good job of, of, of really showcasing what Hylion brings to bear. They've done a great, great job. And um, where I was scrutinizing before, I have no problem with tipping my hat to these guys and letting them know that whatever they did to clean up what was unacceptable in 2021 is absolutely where they need to be right in the pocket in 2022 sharing this opportunity. Okay. So um, the intelligent powertrain, this is great. All new software features and updates are delivered remotely. So don't have to worry about that. Machine learning, algorithms. Um, so right where we want to be with the technology that we have available to us today <laughs> that uh, would just be silly. I just laugh sometimes at the ability of people to downplay this, this opportunity here 
with um, what is being demonstrated here on the screen as the Hypertruck ERX here, the tank being the number one, the generator being number two, which actually reduces the weight of the total overall unit, which tra translates into uh, more payload for the truck itself. Um, you look at the evolution of this company, man, if you go back far enough, you'll hear Thomas Healy talk about um, this, uh, this idea of Hylion being actually placed on the trailers. Uh, so they since uh, fixed that because one single tractor can represent multiple trailers in their application. So that was one of those big shifts in the evolution of this company to come to what you're seeing here in front of you on this di uh, di uh, diagram. Uh, active diagram of, of putting the fuel into the generator, the actual electric charge going into the electric, um, the, the battery systems here, um, and then to the drive motor here, which can actually uh, regenerate energy um, and, and actually the whole unit uh, as a whole. It's very, very impressive what they've done here uh, to provide that power to uh, both of the E-axles. Um, and provide that torque and payload that the companies are looking for. So um, there's the notation there. Um, outforms a diesel. That's the torque and the acceleration uh, at a fully loaded capacity. Um, RNG efficiency. Electric onboard generators expected to be cheaper than power from the grid. We know that to be true. That's why I think this debate right now, I just sit back on the sideline and watch the whole thing like I'm watching a, a professional soccer match. Uh, between RNG and full electric that's supposed to be provided from the grid. And I don't even think our politicians get it, which has me the most nervous. Um, I think they're looking to approach it from a political perspective and not necessarily from an efficiency perspective. What I mean by that is you've got the Republicans and the Democrats going at each other uh, in a way that is the most politically uh, advantageous for them to go at this. And they're failing to understand the education piece behind what it actually takes to provide so much electricity to the grid. And I, I think this is a real miss. I have not been satisfied by the dialogue that's been going on right now with regard to some of the incentives that are being provided to full electric. Um, I am not one of those people that is just totally on board with this whole move to full electric. Uh, I have used electric power tools. Um, I have used uh, battery-driven uh, toys. I, I have, um, I over the course of my life, learned to appreciate um, the real downfalls in the degradation of battery-powered uh, types of applications. And I, I tell you what, that's a big reason why I would never, ever see myself graduating to buying a Tesla. Now, just over the last couple of weeks, I've actually heard some reports of how cheap Tesla parts are made and how uh, cheap things are not standing up to the rigors of demands where people bought them on hype many years ago are, are determining now that uh, some of the pieces and, and components within the vehicle itself are cheap. And this is where I think some of the learnings are going to come to uh, from, from what we know once we introduce highly onto the rigor of class eight space and what those learnings are going to do to validate the product itself uh, to the fleet. So efficiency electric, efficiently electric. Uh, the typical full EV solution requires a complex infrastructure and demands uh, a lot from the grid, right? We know that. Hylion doesn't do that. It basically brings its own charging with us, replaced um, you know, by the internal combustion diesel engine before, um, with the gen set that, um, that is going to be supplied by Cummins to power this unit. I don't know. It just makes sense to me. Um, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm the one that's off base here, but I love the idea. I love the concept uh, of being able to allow the vehicle to be self-sufficient. <laughs> Pretty cool term, actually, when we think of the Hylion opportunity and we think about Hylion as self-sufficient. Uh, and all of the other solutions being dependent. Now, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that hard because if you've stayed with me for the totality of this video so far, I usually try to have an open discussion on the Hylion opportunity for about 60 minutes. So if that's too much for you and you need to take a midterm break, go ahead. We're at the 30 minute mark. I have no problem with that. To hit pause, come back and catch the second half of this because as these discussions happen, 
we really start to uncover this opportunity with Hylion and understand it being a, a kind of a, a, a self-sufficient unit as opposed to being a dependent unit. And I, I think that's the real takeaway here. The Hylion Hypertruck ERX powertrain is an electric drivetrain class eight truck that recharges itself by efficient in route charging. So the generator will kick on as the vehicle continues down the road. You don't, do not miss anything in way of efficiency uh, when we're talking about the opportunity here. Strong acceleration, we already talked about that. It beats a diesel hands down. So in a cross comparison, the only time that I've seen torque really, and I, again, I do admit I'm not a truck driver, but the only piece that I've had come from the benefits of having torque is the ability to accelerate uh, on the on-ramp to get up to freeway speeds. Um, this is an area of focus, right? I don't think somebody's going to maybe go out and buy the hyper truck on the stand alone because it can burn tires like it's demonstrated here. And it, it can. It's, it's electric power. And the people who are experiencing this elect, uh, direct drive, uh, uh, direct uh, electricity, this DC electric, for the first time, um, they're, it's really getting their attention. But this is kind of the real application that I've found to be um, the real takeaway for me in the tutorials that I've heard from people who have drove, driven the unit in that getting up to freeway speeds is going to uh, increase the, the, the safety posture. Uh, as well as just the ease of, 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 um, of getting up to speed into highway traffic uh, with a payload, which is very, very difficult to do. All right. Uh, so some additional uh, points here to be made, improved payload capacity versus the BEV. This is a no-brainer. Um, everything that they, they, they say here, I'm not trying to read this conveniently. I'm only just trying to read and share. But if I read this, it's truth. It is truth, and I find it so interesting how people will come and they will debate these truths uh, so often in, in that somehow uh, the Hypertruck ERX offering the greatest payload capacity when factoring in the increased gross weight allotments for natural gas commercial vehicles or the reduced engine weight. Well, that's an interesting piece. I've never really uh, understood that very much until I read it here with you guys when factoring in the increased gross vehicle weight allotments for natural gas commercial vehicles or the reduced engine weight. So those two play into each other. I didn't know that there was a weight allotment there and an acknowledgement to say, look, you can, you can haul more, no problem. You're not going to burn more if you haul more, right? You can burn as much natural gas as you want. That's great. So very cool stuff on that side of the house as we look to introduce more compressed natural gas to the fleet here in the hauling of our goods and doing so in a much more responsible manner. Uh, the Hypertruck ERX can be refueled as quickly as a diesel truck and can achieve comparable ranges as well, even when fully loaded at 80,000. This is a piece that I, 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 don't, I don't like. I want more out of this. I want this to be a cross comparison. This is... This is interesting. Now, there is an asterisk there. We could go down and see what that asterisk is, but um, yeah, they need to prove this. And it goes into my durability as well as performance factors when I'm looking to evaluate this companies. And it would be the very thing that I would um, ask Thomas Healy about um, if he were ever a guest on the Independent Investor Channel and take advantage of his open invitation uh, to the channel. Um, uh, as of now, I have no reason to believe that he will. He should. Uh, he's missing out on a great opportunity, uh, but I want everybody to understand that that is an open invitation to the boss here. And if he never does, no problem. I will have done my part during uh, what has been a very, very dark period for the stock specifically. The company, I think not so much. However, the company's goings on will reflect uh, what the current stock price is. And there's no arguing that the stock price has been downright uh, downright disappointing. We can all agree with that. Uh, using up to 100% RNG, Hypertruck ERX electric power generate generation is up to 35% less, less expensive than diesel on a mile per diesel equivalent gallon of fuel. So very cool stuff, especially in times like these where we're talking about, you know, um, the high cost of diesel. All right. 
All negative carbon emissions fueled with renewable natural gas hypertruck can deliver net negative carbon emissions. This is huge for scoring out from companies out there who need to drive down their carbon emission score within their uh, specific uh, businesses. So uh, very important. And um, I've heard you know, some of these executives talk about transportation has to be. It's not optional that it's, it's one of the places that they're looking to improve upon um, in their respective businesses. And when you get a dual benefit of not only improving your transportation line and not losing efficiency and also being able to use uh, that negative integer to apply to other applications in their carbon emission score, perhaps maybe areas that aren't quite as easy to reduce or even, dare I say, must be maintained for the health and vi uh, uh, viability of the business, that they can be reduced in this manner here uh, within the transportation sector. With its included plug-in capability, the long-range Hypertruck ERX can operate on demand in an all-electric mode for up to 75 miles, providing fleets additional operational flexibility. This was something that we did not know on the onset, and it was turned out there during kind of the hype period, that of which has just died on the vine. This capability does still exist and, and will exist with the uh, uh, follow-on iterations of the Hypertruck ERX going forward. All right. And then finally, the non-idling of the driver control with the APU unit. This is this is huge, man. The Hypertruck intelligently manages power uh, generation, providing auxiliary power for in-cab electronics and the HVAC systems to reduce and or eliminate idling when the tr uh, driver is in the hoteling in the truck. So uh, very, very cool stuff. Just kind of adds to that. And, you know, when we talk about acceleration to the to the highway, is that a standalone driver? I don't know. I, I would suggest even going green is not a standalone driver for these fleets. But when you talk about driver comfort uh, from a hoteling perspective that's talked about here on the Hylion website, you talk about the driver experience for every second that they're behind the wheel of this, enjoying a more quieter ride. You start to collectively put these pieces together here, and you'll start to come up with a thesis that I've been able to derive and, and, and arrive at Many, many months ago, if not years ago, on this opportunity, how it has never been a better time to get involved in this company than it is right here. 350, 4, 3, 265. It's irrelevant. It does not matter. It does not speak to the opportunity that these guys are looking to stare down uh, and achieve in the Class 8 space. Very, very exciting times. Uh, net carbon and negative emissions. We know that. Those of you who do not know, that has the ability to actually help the environment more by running the truck as opposed to not running the truck. That's negative net negative emissions. Running RNG and burning the methane from the bio waste actually is better for the environment. These units, imagine the air purifier units in your home that take the dust and particulate out of the air. Imagine the Hypertruck ERX out there on the road actually cleaning our environment. If I had a mic, I would drop the mother effer. I'd just give you a moment to let it sink in. These units, through the application of driving our roads, driving the very roads that we as taxpayers pay for, the very roads that these folks pay their, their tax for their industrial application on, could actually be better for the environment, burning renewable natural gas into the future. Guys, I don't know. Five years, 10 years, 20 years down the line, we could evolve to a place where our transportation industry transforms itself and goes from the very worst of polluters on the earth to being actually beneficial for the environment to run. Again, I would drop the mother effing mic if I had one. I don't. But I just want to give you a moment to really let that sink in and understand the opportunity that exists here with this company. It's a bunch of hyper truck air purifiers rolling down the freeway at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's exciting times, man. It's exciting times. I always look back on my life and say, what if I would have invested in Amazon? I wouldn't have. What if I would have invested in Facebook? Had I done that, it really hasn't run up that much since IPO. 
What if I would have invested in Google? What if I would have picked Google instead of Sirius Satellite Radio? <laughs> None of that really matters. I don't beat myself up over that stuff, but I'll be damned if 10 years down the line, I don't look back at this opportunity and say, why didn't I invest in that opportunity, man? All the stars were aligning. Everything was aligned to to really be something. And Hylion is going to be ripe for a, 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 um, an acquisition. I, I get it. People are like, why doesn't Cummins just buy a Hylion? I can't answer that. Um, I think if um, Cummins were right, I think they would. Uh, they would. They would buy it. Um, and then I could stop making highly on videos because I would own a, a crap ton of, of Cummins and I would watch the Hypertruck ERX be a success in and of itself. And I bring you back to the same rationalization that I came to two years ago when I came up with this in my thesis. In my due diligence, I thought, how easy is this to scale, number one, and how easy is it for one of the big guys just to step in and just buy the stupid company, buy everything they have? Buy the proprietary rates to the battery system that they acquired in 2018. Just buy it. Buy their patents that they have, right? Since then, the case for an acquisition has actually strengthened, okay? Insofar as the major equipment that goes under the hood and into the E-axle, Cummins owns it all. And they would be smart to abs absolutely acquire Hylion. Do I think that's going to happen? I don't have an answer for that, man. I will defer to some of the thinking tanks in the Discord group. I will pose that rhetorically, but I am not going to attempt to try to answer that question. Um, I think profits will be capped. I do. I think eventually with the strength of Cummins, I think we're going to see the Hypertruck ERX all over the freeway. I think we're going to see that irrespective of the help. I just think that there's going to be a little bit more risk uh, of of competition if Hylion does hold on to this thing and remain um, Hylion, Holdings, uh, doc, uh, Hylion Holdings as far as providing uh, these products exclusively to the marketplace. But um, we'll see. Uh, we will see. Um, one thing is for certain, this is a great idea. And these trucks will be on the road at some point into the future uh, as, as we look to roll this opportunity out. Um, RNG availability, RNG is de de delivered through the same existing nationwide infrastructure as natural gas. Some people would like to dispute that. Um, these are the facts, Jack. Okay, this is what happens. RNG is widely available today and new sources are in development. That is a true statement. Okay, safe and faster fueling. Safe, it is. Um, you can imagine some of the, um, I'm not sure if I understand the connection piece between electronic charging um, and, and any, if, if any, uh, safety uh, um, uh, considerations that need to be paid uh, by the level of fast charging that needs to be made to improve upon charging times in the BEV fleet and what type of, of safety types of considerations need to be made. Um, that's presumptuous on my part. There may be absolutely none, but I only strike that for the sake of uh, discussion uh, and making you think about um, the potential for putting these things into test and real-world application and having seen some of these questions really come to the forefront and challenge some of what I feel like um, are a lot of bandwagon players with BEV and not looking holistically at the entire market in what some of these other solutions bring to bear. Longer range can travel as far as diesels, that's the second time they've said it on the website, and greater than other proposed solutions, including competitors announced long-haul Class 8 commercial BEVs and fuel cell vehicles. Okay, very cool. Um, this is just a schematic about, um, here it is, existing over the past five years, RNG, Use as a transportation fuel has increased 577%. So there it is. Very, very real on the RNG front. RNG is the moneymaker here, guys. Compressed natural gas. Um, there would be some folks that would suggest that uh, compressed natural gas is not green. It still does produce carbon emissions. Uh, I can't dispute that. That is a fact. Okay. Now, I think this is where Cummins is going to play in because the internal combustion engine is still a generator, right, that's going to go under the hood, that's going to need to pass the carbon NHTSA certification. Uh, once those certifications are re reached and achieved and, and behind us, I think that is also going to be a tailwind for the stock. Um, I've gotten so used to the stock not ever moving that it's going to be uh, a pleasant surprise to actually see it go up. 
and prove that stocks can go more than one direction uh, in in their lifespan. But um, we'll we'll have to get a few of these uh, developments behind us, I think, over over the long term. That's just a scatter plot of the availability um, right there. I believe this is the the RNG. You know, this is CNG stations. Yep. So natural gas in the U.S. So very cool there. OEM class eight manufacturers here. Powertrain is compatible with all of them. Okay, so it's not like if people are, are unhappy with Nikola, they, they cannot go with Nikola. But for the customers that are with Freightliner uh, and with International and want to continue the, that relationship, that's great. They can segue into the Hylion product. Now, that's presumptuous on my part. The only thing I can say right now that's fact is the fact that they have uh, existing relationship with uh, with PAC, with PACR. Um, which is uh, which owns Peterbilt. That's the only one they have. Um, whether or not they can scale into other OEMs, guys, that's another one of those scary questions that I'll propose to the group here. I mean, I'm at the end of my rope. Thomas Healy says that he wants to use Peterbilt as being kind of the flagship. The, the I think it's the 529 model, um, which is a very very popular truck. And then and then look to. Uh, go after other OEMs. There's been zero, and I do mean zero, progress on this front. If they're even having discussions with, um, I don't even know at this point. Those would be happening behind the scenes from a business perspective, and share owners are left uh, in the dark to speculate on any type of uh, progress being made with other OEMs out there. But we do have one, uh, and that one represents an awful lot of trucks being turned out every single year to the fleet. Um, and, and that's just here domestically. And I, I don't think we speak very often about the opportunity abroad with this company, but um, they need to get in and they need to really impress in the domestic market here. Otherwise, it's for naught. Hylion has designed, developed, and uh, delivered our parallel hybrid systems on several OEM truck platforms. That's uh, reflective in, in all of the different photos that are on the website there um, that actually... Um, um, that actually have the um, the systems put on board. So uh, very cool stuff there. Vision for a net carbon uh, commercial transportation industry relies heavy on close collaboration with experienced and innovative partners, representing over 100,000 in the Class 8 commercial truck globally. The Hypertruck Innovation Council will collaboratively closely work with Highland to provide key user insights. This is huge. In the development of the Hypertruck ERX, the company's electrified electric power train for the Class 8 commercial space that will provide superior performance, emissions reduction, and lower operating cost. For you guys that are new to the Hylion opportunity, I'd like to introduce you to the uh, Innovation Council. Uh, these are the aforementioned members. Um, a lot of these companies you do know, um, perhaps maybe some of them you do not know. I've done in-depth research on all of these, and a few of them just as of late have really surprised me. Uh, NFI and Ruan being that, in that they've placed their first set of initial orders with the Hypertruck ERX, quite frankly, fallen on deaf ears. If 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 on the onset the um, the integration and the uh, culmination of the council members would have been realized um, with the run-up in the stock initially two years ago, um, if that type of stuff would have been rolled out now, I think we'd be talking about a twenty dollars stock easy. Um, but uh, that's just not how it happened. Coming to markets a little bit too early um, allowed this scrutinization of the company to question whether or not they were going to actually be able to execute along their timeline, and they haven't, um, which stretches the financial budget where a lot of people were saying they've got all kinds of money to go and, and scale up massively. Uh, I would suggest that that's a real point of contention with me in monitoring their cash burn and making sure that they can really integrate to a place where they can be self-sufficient. Um, and those questions are yet to be answered with this. And I know there's going to be bullish shareholders uh, that may look at that. They may cringe a little bit on that statement, but, uh, but I'm right. Um, you know, the, the cash burn is very, very real. Um, the cash and cash equivalence is key there in that if they start to liquidate uh, uh, the equivalence piece to that, which are uh, short uh, and long-term duration uh, types of, of equities that are meant to turn out fixed income for the operating cost of the business, um, that, that's going to be problematic for the company, man. And I, I, it's going to be interesting over the next year to see if they can meet that 
um, uh, uh, really that acceptance level of, of sustainability. Um, and that's going to be the key takeaway for me with Hylion and monitoring this opportunity going forward. Um, but just some of the statements from some of the um, Hypertruck Innovation Council members. Um, it's going to be awesome to see what these uh, fleets are able to experience um, with that opportunity. Uh, but I just wanted to showcase here, you guys, there's a ton more on the website with regard to Thomas Healy, Investor News, the uh, Board of Governance, really what Hylion stands for in their code of ethics. Um, they're really an above, uh, uh, above board company, which I think is worth taking an absolute look at here in 2022. It's one that I, I enjoy showcasing because I just think the opportunity is fascinating. And I think some of these major things that we talk about here so early on in the company's uh, inception, I mean, we're talking about two products. We, we, we hardly ever talk about other applications for this product. Um, we hardly ever talk about, you know, uh, global integration. We hardly ever talk about their opportunity to segue their product into other OEMs and maybe some exposure to some other customers uh, that are represented by other OEMs other than Peterbilt. But uh, guys, I really appreciate you hanging with me through this tutorial of the Hylion.com website. Said some cool stuff in this video. I hope it resonated with you and I hope it uh, helped you make more informed decisions for your investing future specific to Hylion Holdings as we monitor this opportunity going forward. Guys, thank you so much and uh, we'll kick you back and we'll actually conclude the video. All right, guys, so we've come out of the tutorial uh, on Hylion.com. All kinds of cool information um, on Hylion. Um, Hylion.com is the best. Um, uh, followed up by a great discussion group, which is Discord group. They do a great job, um, as well as myself, who puts out these videos weekly. I would invite you to subscribe to the channel if you like the content, you like the updates. Um, I'm, I'm not doing this for any other reason, this reason other than to share opportunity. That's it. Share opportunity where I think opportunity exists and is not getting its due credence in the, in the stock market. Right now, it's not. That's just the fact. It's not getting its due credence, and it will. And when it does, there will be all kinds of momentum that will build up on this company. Uh, it will be interesting to see how they unfold over the next 15, 18 months. And I'm going to be right there in the pocket covering the entire story. I'm fascinated on the opportunity that is made uh, by Hylion and what they're trying to do in achieving a net uh, carbon neutral future uh, for the class eight space uh, in, in the trucking and transportation industry. Guys, if you appreciate the message, I want to make sure and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of this video. I said a ton through the making of this video, and hopefully it uh, generates some churn on this topic. Uh, leave your comments. Uh, all comments are, are welcome um, as long as they're kept above board. Uh, I'm not looking this do, to do this to waste my time, or nor yours. I'm looking to uncover opportunity for people, and that's it. I've already uncovered it for me. I'm fine. Uh, but to, to, to help you guys understand the opportunity that exists with Hylion and what they're doing now, and more importantly, what they're uh, looking to do for the future. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.